So I used to listen to an old um, genre back in high school that's called pulse rock. It's a um, form of rock music uh, that's mostly instrumental, um, but there are some uh, bands that use vocals. But anyway, this genre is, um, some people call it atmospheric, which is a good word. I always find that very fitting, but because when I listen to post rock music, I always used to picture um, nature and landscape. It's a, it's a genre that's uh, dominated by um, uh, electric guitars with uh, a lot of reverb and the use of effects and uh, pedals. So, um, this amount of reverb would always give images of landscape, uh, nature, mountains, space, the sky, uh, stuff like that. So, uh, atmospheric stuff, basically. And uh, yeah, there are a, a couple of a good uh, post-rock bands out there. See Good Ross, which, is, which use uh, a lot of other genres like classical elements. Uh, there is a uh, deviant called post-punk, which mix, mixes punk music. And uh, there's post-metal, which mixes post-metal with post-rock. So, but post-rock in itself, I would say, is a very atmospheric genre. I'm fascinated by a lot of uh, synth, actually. Uh, a lot of synth hits me emotionally, especially melancholic synth and um, uh, 80s synth. Um, but uh, obviously the words and lyrics uh, themselves are very important to me as well, because I feel like whatever an artist is trying to say, if, I, if it's hitting me, then he's doing his job, uh, lyrically wise. Because as a storyteller, you should always do that. Um, but it really depends on, on the song, I think. Some, some songs hit me more than others. It depends if the artist is talking about something that is relatable. Some songs are more relatable than others. And, um, but I also think uh, they, the instrumental music itself has to, um, has to uh, complement the lyrics and that is not always the easiest thing to do. Um, there's also a, uh, like, like the, one of my favorite artists called Roosevelt, he does, his lyrics are generally considered very sad, he talks a lot about heartbreak but he does a different thing where he mixes very uplifting instrumentals with uh, funky bass, uh, some good drums here and there, and it creates a weird sort of combination of uh, like happy dance music with sad lyrics, and it's uh, it's a nice dynamic, I think. It's, uh, I think when it comes to imagery, I base, uh, base it on the instrumental itself. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely possible. But uh, yeah, I, th I think uh, instrumental itself, because when I listen um, to uh, music, it's, it's very uh, visual for me. So um, images pop up in my head, different figures, shapes, colors. Um, a lot of, uh, I picture a lot of space actually, <laughs> yes. Yeah, as a filmmaker, storyteller, actor, whatever, um, when I listen to certain parts of music, um, I create a story in my head already through listening of uh, sound, um, and lyrics. So, uh, for example, if I listen to uh, jazz, I picture 40, 50s uh, noir films, uh, like jazz nightclubs or uh, 
detective stories, cigarettes, smokes, um, uh, nighttime, usually rain, uh, murder mystery. Um, so for me, that's as a as a storyteller that that's automatically engraved in my brain. I already pictured the story in itself. It's it's a if it's a movie about a heartbreak, I picture you know. A song about heartbreak, a picture of a relationship that's breaking apart and two people that cannot see each other anymore and so forth. So it's very varied and uh, I don't know where it comes from, it's just maybe me as a filmmaker that I'm very visual in what I uh, perceive, I perceive art very visually, so um, my brain works like that. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I listen to a lot of electronic music and there is a, um, so there was a movie that came out in 2011. That's one of my favorite movies, if not my favorite. It's called Drive. Uh, it came out in 2011. It's a neo noir crime film. It's with, like a love story, but uh, what's fascinating about that movie is um, because of the soundtrack, the soundtrack was so praised and so peculiar for its time that uh, it started a brand new wave of uh, electronic music. And the, the genre is called synthwave, which is um, electronic music that's basically inspired by a lot of 80s music, uh, hence synth, because 80s music used to have a lot of synth, synthesizers and so forth and I guess it's like a modern spin on 80s music so uh, that genre is inspired by different like uh, 80s nostalgia uh, like uh, 80s movies 80s uh, fashion uh, advertisements and so forth and a lot of stuff that was popular in the 80s was the use of colors and uh, like neon lights, like in movies like Blade Runner, um, the whole cyberpunk genre. So when I listen to electronic music, for example, I listen to Daft Punk, which is a big electronic uh, uh, band. Uh, I picture a lot of neon lights. And that is the automatic association I have with that type of music. And that goes for a lot of electronic music for me because uh, I guess it's one one because they use electric electric equipment and then electric lighting it goes hand in hand I guess. Yes, I think a lot of it also is bound by culture. So like if I listen to classical, I picture a classical theater or opera or uh, Mozart or um, Victorian era um, history or um, yeah certain things like. That.